And welcome to episode 46 of the Brood Sages, Stormbound players with a head for the game. I am Freeloader, and with me, as always, are Sabaiku and Thomas. Sabaiku, how is it going tonight? Fantastic. And Thomas, throwing it over to you. How's it going tonight? Pretty all right. <laughs> we are the Brood Sages, easily the second best Stormbound related podcast in production. And as a reminder, you can always follow us on, oh, pardon me, you can always follow us at Brood Sages on Twitter. Or for all of you who once upon a time were falling in love, but now you're only falling apart, our email address is thebroodsages at gmail.com. Guys, we have a lot of stuff to get through today. I don't know if you heard, but the December patch notes have in fact dropped. For all of you who uh, want to follow along at home, load up stormbound-kitty.com right now and find the December uh, patch notes. But before we get there, Sabaiku, there's this new thing called the Race to the Heroes League uh, that the MKM is pushing can you give us some information on it? Yeah, so this originally started when the Heroes League first hit us, so probably about eight months ago, nine months ago now. Uh, and there were rewards for the first few people to get there. And now uh, Sheepyard and uh, the community are helping to bring that back. So this is a little bit different. Now there are extra rewards for the first three participants, but Anyone who reaches the Heroes League within the first week of the season just has to share the screenshot of them making the Heroes League in Discord with their player ID, and you'll get one ticket for a raffle. It's up to seven participants get 25 rubies, and one participant will get 100 rubies. Ooh. In addition, the first player to make the Heroes League will get an additional ticket to the raffle, and a bonus wheel reward, which is uh, extra shots at 25 rubies, additional tickets, and extra shots at 50 or 75 rubies. So uh, pretty, a pretty nice little bonus for being first, and you get some bragging rights too. Uh, second and third player will get an extra ticket into the raffle also. So um, yeah, hopefully this helps people to get to the Heroes League a little bit earlier in the month than they otherwise would. Well, this certainly adds uh, a lot of excitement. I mean, those those are like brawl reward levels of rubies and stuff. Well, maybe maybe not, maybe not if you go far enough. But still, that's that's quite a uh, that's quite a good haul if you can make it there early. Now, Thomas, you have mentioned in the past that you need to be aware of getting to the Heroes League too soon in the uh, month because once you get there, you can't find an opponent. Uh, do you think this is going to maybe alleviate some of those issues? Both yes and no. Um, it will because that is some pretty good rewards right away. But uh, I say no because in the balance uh, notes that we saw from last month, uh, Sheepyard had mentioned that they were going to be changing up the um, algorithm again. And so to um, to basically contradict what I had said last time we, we met, uh, they definitely changed it up. And when I was pl playing in Diamond this month, I got queued against quite a few um, Heroes Leagues players in like the 13 to 1500 score range. And so they've clearly changed it up enough where Heroes League players can uh, match up again with Diamond players. So they've already fixed the issue uh, internally. Mm -hmm. So this is just another nice bonus. So at this point, I see no reason not to go straight over into Heroes League to get these extra rewards. Are you going to be uh, uh, participating in this challenge? Probably, just just for the fun of it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, uh, to all of our listeners, uh, we are doing the best we can to try to get this word out. Uh, you can help us and uh, help this program out. If you also tell your friends who play uh, that they should be participating, maybe even a little bit of peer pressure, you know, dude, pick up that phone, play a couple of games. Let's go. Um, uh, best of luck to everyone who gets involved. Now we are going to transition from that to our main topic of the night, which of course is mm, 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 patch notes. So Baiku, first up, we've got our balance changes. Do you want to talk me through Victors of the Melee? Yeah, the Victors of the Melee strength is now going to be going up at each level. It'll be going up from 3, 4, 4, 6, 7 to 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Mm -hmm. Nice little bump. The ability stays the same. Still doing the same AoE damage, but at least the base unit is a little stronger now. It's still very weak 
for its mana cost, though, isn't it? It's not really. The The main issue with it is that it can't clear the board. Um, when you can clear the opponent's front, that's really what matters. And with this doing four damage to the surrounding units, it's not clearing mm. your opponent's gifted or green prototypes. And so when you're a control deck trying to play a control card like this, and not clearing your opponent's front is really the main hindrance of this card. That's the reason mm. why Void Surge is probably going to continue seeing more play than this, even though the Void Surge doesn't have any movement. Void Surge is one mana cheaper. The ability does more damage. Like you said, this is two, three, or four damage, depending on the level. And it's it's fine. It's just not quite enough. It's just very, very specialized situations when you want to use it. Yep. So instead of doing the the base power strength increase, it, the ability uh, going up by by one more damage would have actually then made the, the C quite a bit of play. Maybe actually even be a little bit OP. Yeah, I, I think that's the problem with it too. If you bump up the ability to five and it clears out one and two and even three mana cards, like it's it's really good at that point. Yeah, but don't we want it to be at this at this mana cost? It, it it feels it feels like something that expensive should be more powerful. No, because I agree with both of you that that uh, Void Surgers feels like a more powerful card. Yeah, but Void Surge just has the positional requirement, which makes it very situational also. Um, it, at least this doesn't need three units to trigger. And now it'll okay. be able to do up to 12 to whatever it attacks, right? Because what it's attacking takes the four damage before the now eight strength goes into it. Um, but it still leaves something on the board on the side, probably. It, I think it's worth experimenting with, but I don't think it's going to be adopted. Well, uh, for those of you who are uh, uh, not by your computers and, and can't remember, uh, at max level, Void Surgers actually does six to all sur uh, su to the uh, surrounding enemies, provided that there's at least three to proc it. And I just want you to bear in mind that number six. We're going to foreshadow a little bit. And we're just going to move on from Victors of the Melee. <clears throat> Uh, moving on from Victors of the Melee, we have one of the other elders that doesn't see a ton of play here, Thomas. Greenwood Ancients, which was like a meme sweetheart for a bit, right? <laughs> it's true. I did play it against it once this last month already, and was actually kind of surprised at how difficult it was to remove. Um, but getting over into the ability first, uh, the, um, the ability all increases by one uh, across the board same base strength but with uh, one extra increase to the uh, the ability and i do think that this will see a bit more play than the one game that i played against it um, <laughs> so more than one guy out there <laughs> yeah exactly well one guy and one game he, after that one game it was like oh no this isn't gonna happen anymore <laughs> Now, um, if you get the ability proc once, it's uh, 10 strength for 4 mana with 1 movement, which is perfectly in line with what you'd hope to expect. Um, hopefully heroic soldiers can get that someday. <laughs> 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 but I, I do feel like this is going to be pretty difficult to remove um, if you've got any decent board state whatsoever. Yeah, it's kind of like mini Earth Fathers, mini Toad, kind of. Like, it it takes attack, it clears a unit, and then it gets stronger, and it'll continue to get stronger unless you can take it out in a, a one shot, or unless your board is otherwise clear, which is really not desirable for you. Or, or your board's nothing but rain, right? Does not do well into Toad's Man, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> but so this one, unlike Victor's, this one I will be definitely doing some more testing on. Um, I don't okay. see myself actually doing any testing with Victor's, but Green Word, Greenwood, I, I definitely will be. Yeah, I'm okay. not sh actually even sure what um, faction or what archetype it goes into yet. Um, this is probably just going to be one of those niche cards where when your opponent is playing or when there's like a lot of, I don't know, let's just say winter mid-range, this could be one of those four mana niche cards like we've talked about quite a bit. Um, but then when there's a lot of Swarm Rush, this doesn't see any play at all. It's just going to be another one of those four mana slots. Exactly. Yeah, you're going to tech it in if your opponent is playing some beefy units. And this is a pretty good late game card. And honestly, even pretty early on, your opponent plays, I don't know, uh, uh, green prototypes and wild saber paws to start off the game. 
you can respond with this, eat up one of their units. It gets the ability activates, it gets bigger, and it's it's not too terrible. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking about it because most of the uh, elders really want a small, like aside from Bucks, right? Bucks wants to take the biggest shot it can and still survive. That's when you're getting real good value out of it. But most of the other elders just want a small uh, uh, amount of damage. Like like literally pairing with Destructo bots is one of the best things you can do with a lot of the elders out there. But Greenwood kind of feels like it would rather be like a bucks where it takes as much damage as possible that's not lethal right yeah so the problem that i have with greenwood is that if you actually get a good trigger off of it and say your opponent has um, four things on the board now this is going to get 16 strength after it takes a trade Mm -hmm. but then it's the largest unit on the board by quite a bit so it doesn't continue to grow when it takes damage anymore your opponent can actually chip it down if they want to it seems like a a bit of a waste but i agree with you you know but you you know thing like it it kind of it works once and then it kind of stops working it's a one trick pony kind of a thing but but i wonder in thomas's assessment that that you don't want to play against a, a rush deck if if my opponent's board is nothing but like a doppel box, uh, uh, a, 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 a restless goats, a uh, gifted recruits, and a summon militia, right? There's five units on the board. If I trade my level five into the 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 gifted recruits, for example, <laughs> that's a lot of that's a lot of buffing. Like I, I I think if you only if you're playing against an opponent who's only playing one or two cards, one or two units a turn. They're never going to have that much of a board that it really matters that you're gaining, you know, what, three whole, right? You you kill a, a gifted recruits and you gain three mana back or six mana back even. So now it's a seven health. Okay. I don't know. It just doesn't, doesn't seem like it's as scary as it is when your opponent is spamming lots of units. Well, but I mean, like when it gains like the six back and it essentially just goes up. So like that was the one game I played against the one opponent was as soon as it hit the board, I literally couldn't kill it because if I wanted to smash into it with something, it was essentially just doing a scrapped planners proc every single time where it would get oh, okay. like I would like I couldn't run into it with my siege breakers or my gifted recruits because both of them dropped it below the couple units that I had on the board and it just gained uh, that that strength right back. So it really did feel like a scrapped planners when I was playing against it, that opponent. Uh, but again, it, this is kind of kind of depend on what type of deck your opponent is playing. Okay. Well, I think we've given it its due consideration. Moving on from there, Sabaika, we have a new card, uh, uh, Wetland Deceivers. I've never seen this card before. <laughs> never seen this card before, but it is not actually new. Just, you know, <laughs> one one of those cards that never saw a lot of play because it's not very good. Mm-hmm. Now, its strength is going to be going up. Uh, it used to be 3, 4, 4, 5, 6. Now it'll be 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it gets a one mana strength buff at level 3, 4. I mean, sorry, it gets a one strength buff at levels 3, 4, and 5. It remains three mana, it remains zero movement, and the ability on play, destroy all surrounding units with one, two, or three strength, depending on the level, that stays unchanged. So it's kind of like a mini Void Surgers, but it'll destroy your own units, and now it's just kind of bigger. Yeah, it doesn't, it's it's not quite like, so Void Surgers does the damage regardless of whether or not the damage is lethal, right? Correct. Wetland only destroys units with minimum or maximum health requirements uh and that's i think why it fails to ever meet the sniff test like even at level five it's a six soon to be seven health unit which isn't bad a three mana seven zero is fine but like you think about what trekking alderman will do in terms of damage in that spot my favorite card in the game just want to plug it but this this won't even this the only thing in the game that you can kill that's healthy from that is either uh, toad spam or doppelbox. That's, that's it. Yeah, everything else needs to have already survived a trade. So it's not something you want to play to open the game. It's something that you play in the middle of the game when you're kind of fighting for a position in the middle of the board. And mm-hmm. even then, like it's yeah, it's tough to use. It's tough to rely on. It's too situational. And it destroys your own things. If your units survive the trade, you can often kill your own units. Well, if my opponent is playing Greenwood Ancients, maybe I want to. Have you thought about that? Did not cross my mind. (laughs) 
<laughs> Which would have to be the most interesting game of Stormbound ever. Please, if you are playing a Wetland Deceivers deck and you queue into someone with Greenwood Ancients, can you just hit record on that puppy and submit it to our email address? <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> but but Thomas, Thomas, wait, wait, wait. There is an additional use to Wetland Deceivers starting December 1st because... <laughs> Scrapped Planners is getting the Nerf Hammer. After how many months, or actually, I guess at this point, years, have people been <laughs> asking for a Scrapped Planners nerf? We're finally getting one. The strength is going to stay the same, the initial strength, um, but now its ability is being dropped by one across all levels. So that means at level five, it is now going to only have six strength after trading into something. Oh my goodness. So Wetland Deceivers wins the survives. trade. <laughs> survives. The survives the trade. The trade. Even though the on play effect still doesn't do anything. Still doesn't do anything. No, no, no. <laughs> But but I love this. Uh, 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 look, if, if I told you the stats of a four mana card was an eight one, you'd shrug, right? That's fine. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. We've got Siege Breakers. We've got lots of examples of a four mana eight one. Uh, it was the extra effect that it had of bouncing all the way back up to seven after taking that initial trade that was really rough. At six, so Michael, this feels fair now. This feels like it's still a strong card. You're still going to come out ahead mana-wise, usually. You're going to get about the same sort of value that you get out of Toad or Edric with one uh, with one proc on it, right? Like, that's yeah, what it yeah. was. So Scrap Planner is the way I always thought of it. Had a superpower where the superpower was it can't be killed by anything that costs less mana than it, which is, you know, not entirely true. There's a couple of three mana, seven no's or uh, eight o's that you could plop in front of it. You could put an unstable building in front of it. Uh, it's no longer like that. You can actually now kill it with cheaper cards after it's already taken a trade. It's still got to be, you know, kind of exactly dubious hags or exactly destructo bots or sparkly kitties at level five. Um, but now even like Westwind Sailors will get rid of it. Toxic Sacrifice will get rid of it. Yeah, Void Dark Surgers. Harvest will get rid of it. Void Surgers Hunter's will Vengeance. Get, right. All of these AOE control cards that you kind of didn't want to play just because of scrapped planners. You can now play and they're all going to be okay. And, uh, you know, just in, in thinking of that list of cards that now couldn't reach seven damage, but do six damage. I realized just how much scrapped planners and having to counter it was really warping the meta around just needing to respond to this one card. It absolutely was. As a like favorite faction, uh, if you people couldn't tell, is uh, Swarm. It, it absolutely was pushing Swarm down so hard, and that's the reason why there's all these Swarm very heavy mid-range decks that exist, because Swarm Rush or just lighter versions of Swarm literally couldn't exist because of spl Scrap Planners at the top end of Heroes League. Yeah, and it's funny because to, to, to what Sabaiko and I were just talking about, control really struggle how many other cards would you say are completely impervious to aoe <laughs> like don't even take like 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 a like a, a an aaron needle blast blade storm turn scrap planners are exactly in the same spot that they were in before they're still seven health nothing happened to them yeah before you could play something like shady ghoul or embers of chaos where you take a tempo hit in the beginning with a, you know, a one strength unit, but at least you say, okay, if they play AOE, I'll get something on the board after it's done. Right. Scrapped was just like that, only better because <laughs> you didn't have to take the care. initial tempo hit. You could right. play it for tempo and it would still be there no matter what your opponent does. I, I feel like there's going to be a lot of um, control decks that can come back into the game now that relied on hunter's vengeance for the early board control till they could get their feet under them and stabilize it's just going to completely open up the entire meta because i'm like i honestly almost like now that like we're talking about it think that scrap planners is probably the reason why mid-range was the only viable heroes league uh type of deck because swarm rush 
or just rush in general couldn't really exist because they didn't have enough heavy hitter cards to be able to deal with scrapped and Mm -hmm. control couldn't exist because they also couldn't deal with scrapped and so here you are stuck playing heavy value mid-range decks to be able to deal with scrapped yeah i needed a four mana or five mana card multiple of them preferably so that i could always you know find one when i needed it just to deal with scrapped and if if you're already requiring me to play a four mana and five mana heavy hitter well i've basically that's that's one sixth of a mid-range deck already (laughs) right right (laughs) yeah no it's true and now if you can see more rush then you can play more control as a response to that and not worry about losing to ironclad all the time Mm -hmm. this is gonna be so good i am i am so honestly excited i do not think for a minute that scrap planners should be removed from a single deck that wants to play scrapped planners it is still a very good card but man is everything else going to get an opportunity now even wetland deceivers <laughs> so one last thing i have to say about that so um i we've said quite a few times that uh sheepyard has said whenever they do a buff or a nerf um people kind of go to the extreme with the thing and they quit playing it entirely um if it got a nerf or play it way too much when it got a buff when they're mm-hmm. really just tweaking uh, a very small percentage of the power level or the ability on the thing i think that's I can actually for once be serious that this actually is that big of a change, even though it's only one less power um, that this is really, really huge um, because you're most likely going to get like the, the gifted recruits. Like you guys have been mentioning for a while now that uh, you're like mana positive with uh, scrap planners. And now Mm -hmm. you're basically mana neutral. Um, This thing is going to eat like a gifted uh, um, or, yeah, gift of recruits, and then you're going to have to clear it with your sparkly kitties. So four mana for four mana. Um, but take a look at something like Siege Breakers, where it's going to take like a four mana card, plus you also got their true shot post. So you're uh, way, way ahead on mana. And then something like Edric. Most good Edric players are getting two procs at a time from it, and that's worth six to eight mana. Um, and so I actually have a feeling that most ironclad players that aren't playing like heavy um, constructs are going to probably slot Scrapped out and Edric in. Well, Scrapped is a good play on mana four. If you can get two procs on an Edric on mana four, bless you. I've I've been able to do it quite a bit. Uh, Arthas has been teaching me to use uh, like Saber Paws, something that's got some good movement, or Green Gale Serpents, something that can get past them and play Edric on the backside of their front for the double proc. Mm-hmm. Um, that's fantastic, but that's mana six or seven. Uh, I don't know that Edric on four is as good as Scrapped is on four. No, I agree. Scrapped is better early on. Edric is probably better in the mid game. Um, you know, when you're fighting for that position in the middle of the board, like I said before, that's mm-hmm. that's when you really want to make a high value play that can turn the game around for you. Uh, I I do have to disagree with you thomas i do think that scrapped is still going to be perfectly good in a lot of these like rushy or high tempo uh, ironclad decks that do tend to be most of the ones that i run into yeah but remember um with this ability going down to six edric is now live again yes that oh, is it true. is yes <laughs> edric edric just gotten buffed yeah, exactly. He got right. buffed. He's coming back with a vengeance. And now Toad can Alderman actually... Just got buffed. Yeah, Trekking yeah. Alderman is a good response to this. Toad oh my gosh. will actually be able to trade into the leftover scrap unit. Um, so Toad becomes a little more viable too, even uh, after the nerf that Toad just got. Yep. Um, I, so, yeah. I, I think that Toad is actually the best comparison for scrap, right? Like the nice thing about Toad is that it's a two for one. You never really count on getting more than one jump out of Toad. And in the same way, you don't really want to count on getting more than two units out of scrap. You're going to use it to take out something relatively large, uh, you know, five, six, seven strength. And then get that health back, and your opponent trades into what's left over, and that's okay. It did its job. Yeah, I think I, I, it, I, it's great into uh, uh, Zuri Swarm, which might still uh, uh, be uh, around. I think it might even see a resurgence uh, from this, but it's still a very good response into uh, uh, the Zuri Swarm column. Although maybe 
you could make the argument now that Windmakers is actually a better uh, uh, play into it. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I, I agree with Thomas that there is now a better value play on four, or pardon me, four, four mana. It's just not on four. So I think a lot of aggressive ironclad decks, I, I would still slot this in. I, I think in an aggressive ironclad deck, I'm looking for something that's you know going to make it very difficult for my opponent to remove my front. This still does that. I guess we'll find out who's uh, higher up in the Heroes League <laughs> next month. <laughs> well, well, if that's what we're going uh, by, here's a don't challenge. To me. Um, and so here, like, just so all, all the listeners know, what I plan on doing next month is Edric and Hunter's Vengeance are going in. Scrapped is coming out, and I'm not sure what the next thing is coming out. I like that. Although I'm probably still going to play Trekking. I think Trekking is going to be my. Trekking is still good. It, it, I, it's, I... it got better with this, right? <laughs> That's such a good response. I might slot uh, Toxic Sacrifice back into my Shadowland decks. Please sure. don't. Just <laughs> playing that card. <laughs> yeah, even at two mana, that's still real good. Well, I'm glad you brought up Toxic Sac, uh, Sabaiku, because um, one of the best cards to pair it with, Reign of Frogs, is also getting a balance change right now. Would you like to talk us through that? I would love to talk through this burf. Sorry, MKM. (laughs) Reign of Frogs will now cost two mana at level one instead of three mana, and the ability will spawn three toads instead of four toads. So minus one toad, minus one mana. This gets rid of the mana change while leveling, so it no longer goes from three mana down to two. It just stays at two the whole way. Uh, This was, I believe, the last card that Sheepyard hadn't touched that had a mana change in the leveling progression, and I'm glad it's gone. They had touched it already because uh, at five, Reign of Frogs, I believe, used to be one, right? It did, yeah. Yeah, that that was was before. We we never had it at one, either of us. We both got our Reign of Frogs to five after that. Um, So it's already been adjusted once. Now the other end of the spectrum is also getting adjusted, which I love the uniformity of it makes me very happy um i think it's still an excellent card does anyone think that for any reason you shouldn't play this i think it's more playable at level one now because i yeah. mean the main reason i wouldn't use it in um for example in the casual bra with the level with the level one cap i didn't use it because it was three mana and now i, will I would use forget it. yep i would forget i would open with like saber paws and then what's going on <laughs> i can't play my ring yeah, and that's the reason why I think this is just a straight buff, because mana discount, uh, I shouldn't say always, but is always better than a strength increase. Fair enough. Yep, yep. mana is more important almost every time. Mm-hmm. So I know I keep harping on tricking Alderman, guys, um, mm-hmm. but that's because it is a fantastic card. And it's getting buffed now, not only because Scrap Planners is dropping to six health, but also because of the new card coming out. On December 23rd, we are getting a new card, Thomas. It is called Minion Launchers. What can you tell us about this puppy? All right. So we finally have another uh, neutral rodent, another four mana on each card. Uh, strength, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then go. its ability on play deal one or two two three three damage to a random friendly non-legendary unit on the side then deal the same damage to the first enemy in front so we get a mashup of destructo bots and overchargers in the same card for all factions baby for everyone tell me opening on one with trekking into this puppy on two isn't just gross pew, 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 pew. Pew, 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 pew. you have to make that sound too i think six times you have to make it six times five from trekking and one from and this, then one's from this. <laughs> <laughs> no 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 but there's also the first one it's seven times oh seven times <laughs> although the first one could be a boop uh guys this is amazing uh Sabaiku, what do you think I love it. It's a weird card. It's kind of like overchargers, but it's like transferring the strength from your unit to the enemy base because, look, let's be fair about it. You're, you're never trying to hit a unit with this. You're always trying to make it go base. Um, the way that it does it is um, unique. It opens up a lot of synergy with elders. You've talked about trekking. You know, but uh, Greenwood Ancients, right? Uh, sure. Doesn't work on Legendaries. Can't use it with Bragda, which I think is a good limitation. It makes the wording a little clunky. But if you're looking for a way to uh, 
trigger booming professors or hairy chestnuts, add a little base damage from it. You know, I think it, I think it's a nice way to do that. I, so I will be, uh, this is the deck that I'm going back to is the make nuts great again deck. Um, I, I'm, go, I'm going to, as soon as December 23rd comes around anyway, <laughs> for the last couple of days of the month, I will be playing a minion launchers, uh, 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 shadow fen, uh, Harry Chestnut's deck uh, because yeah I think being able to do five points of damage to face uh, between the minion launchers and the chestnuts a lot of times the, the the chestnuts are being played somewhere where they'll also get another ping at the start of my opponent's turn so that's now seven it that seven points of damage from one chestnuts play feels doable uh, uh, right like that that feels like maybe we can make it work but there are two to Sabaiku's point Thomas all kinds of weird, funky things. Um, I like the no legendary. Bragg is probably the reason for it. But also, if you look at the art, uh, um, for those of you who can get onto Stormbound Kitty and see it, uh, it's literally a cannon with this road lighting the fuse. And it's just some like mini me minion stuck in it about to get launched. And it makes sense because you have to first dis or do that damage to your unit to then deal damage to the base or whatever other thing is in the way. And so if if you don't have a, a unit on the side to deal damage to, then he's not going to shoot anything. So he is essentially flinging whatever is near him in front of him. <laughs> well, non-legendary. Oh, yeah, true. Because yeah, yes, no yes. one stuffs Loris in a cannon. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, it, I don't know. It's cute. It's going to be fun to play with. I, I'm excited because of how many more um, chip decks can come out of this. Uh, control decks always need more alternative win cons, and this is going to be just a nice little side piece that they can put in their pocket. Yeah, I, 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 I'm wondering if this doesn't open up a Shadowfen chip control deck again uh, uh, be between being able to use it with trekking early and then with chestnuts into the mid and late game uh I, I feel like there's some opportunity here i i also don't think we've harped enough on the fact that it is in fact a common and so yes. you stop me if i'm wrong uh are we now back to parity between commons and rares or are there still more rares once this comes into play i think there's still one more rare maybe two oh. more rares than commons once this comes into play i am very excited about it being a common though because i with all of the rares being introduced and then of course sparkly kitties is a it's an epic uh it's been a little hard to to level up a lot of these new fragmented essences and, and uh whatnot um i'm, I'm happy about that I, I think that's 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 a good thing to see new comments coming out. So one more question for you, Thomas. I compared this to kind of like a funky overchargers before you made, you made that comparison too. Would you play this over, over instead of overchargers in an ironclad deck? Ooh, that's a tough choice. Um, I think no, and the reason okay. for that is because of the man. You might have to get back to me in a couple of weeks when I've got more time to think about this. Mm -hmm. I, I think the reason I say no, though, is because of the few times that you just have to clear your opponent's gifted recruits on your baseline and you still want to do the three damage forward, you can. This thing can't do that. This can't side block, although the, the larger body should help out more for the early game so you don't have something on your baseline so much that you need to protect. Um, yeah, but I the, the lack of movement does kind of hurt you there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say oh. you should play both. Exactly. If, That's if exactly where I was about to go. <laughs> if you want overchargers in your deck, you want this too. So if you want that, you definitely want this as well, because if you're playing Ironclad, you want to do all the chip damage in the world. So, so having both of them is the correct line of play for sure. But then the just nice side benefit is that this can go in every deck. Um, if you want to um, play this, how about in Swarm um, Control or mid-range, where there's this or there's Mischiefs, which is the one that you want to play with, Subaiku, do you think? Well, I am on the record as saying I think Mischiefs are terrible and nobody should use them, so I guess that makes this the card by default. Yep, but if you're like in a chip deck, kind of like what we were just talking about with the overchargers. Yeah, it's um, it's tough. So you're, do you just you, not play mischiefs and play only this, or do you play both of them? I think I think I think you do play both of them. I think you're right. Okay. You're just trying to get all the chip you can, and 
Like you said, th- this will at least be something you can put on the board for eight strength, even if you don't get any chip out of it. It it does hold the line for you, I guess, um, and and let you get to that point. I think I have to agree that mischiefs is so bad that you just shouldn't play it, and probably only play this instead because uh, that huge reduction on on damage that it does just isn't worth the four mana, and so take that out put in a little bit more controlling cards like conjurer's vengeance and to just be able to use this and vindicators and needle blast right yeah i i don't know about needle blast but you know between vindicators and ubis and this there's definitely enough chip damage to go around Mm -hmm. especially getting a rodent in your deck too um when you're in a swarm deck for for the ubas ability point didn't think about the extra unit type there i did two seconds ago All right, so next up, we have uh, something to help out new players in the game. We have a card upgrading tutorial. Uh, this is excellent if you're new to the game. One of the weirder things, or maybe not weirder, but 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 certainly less common uh, uh, things you see in digital card games is the ability to upgrade a card. Uh, I know when I first started and I got uh, what I thought were dupes, I'm like, oh, okay, well, I guess all I'm going to do is disenchant those at some point for dust, right? Uh, no, it turns out you would want to make your cards more powerful. So this is a nice little way uh, uh, to help out the new players out there. And if you are a new player listening, um, hey, don't forget to collect your free six fusion stones. That brings us to the next one. And guys, this one, I think we're going to end up, I know we're already going a little long, but this one <laughs> warrants some conversation. There will be from now on a card level cap, which will even out the playing field for players in each of these leagues. Guys, how amazing is this? I'll go through them very quickly and then we'll, we'll go back and talk. So if you are in the starters league, Iron League or Bronze League, the card levels will be capped at two silver and gold. We'll see the card levels capped at level three. And then Platinum, Diamond, and Heroes all have maximum cap of five. Whew. Wow. Uh, Thomas, you want to start first? This is going to help out the farming issue so, so much. Like, you have no idea. <laughs> oh, for the sure. Gold League was just rampant with farmers and so i I am so happy for the long-term implications this has um short term we're not going to see much issue but um brazosa had said that he wants to increase the player base by twofold in the next year this is going to be very well on the way to to getting them there yeah so i'm very excited about this what do you think I love uh, both the extremes, I think, are great, right? Diamond and Heroes League should definitely be capped at five. And I Mm -hmm. like Iron uh, and Bronze being capped at two because it lets you get some duplicates. You just talked about the new card upgrading tutorial. It lets you get duplicates, upgrade the cards, and actually play with the upgraded cards. Like That's important for a new player to see progression and to be like, oh, this is stronger now. And Oh, you know, I lucked into an extra copy of Soul Crusher, so I'm going to let that carry me through the Bronze League because it's level two and all my other cards are level one, that kind of deal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Where it gets a little dicey is in the middle for me. I think Silver and Gold are good at three. Platinum League at five is like, it kind of feels like that should be four instead. Yeah, I I, I find it interesting. So one of the things that uh, uh, Sebaiku and I uh, mentioned to each other earlier today that I think warrants being mentioned is um you know when you are leveling a card up from one all the way to five more than half of the copies you need are just to get from level four to level five so so the total number of copies you need to go from one to five over half of it is in that last crawl from level four to five and there's not a place where once you get your your library to level four that you can even compete at level four you still have to either deal with them all being level three or immediately jump into the level five pool thomas what do you think um i honestly won't be surprised if they're open to change the one for um, platinum league i have a feeling the reason why they left platinum at five is for the very good um gold league players that have a couple level fours could end up breezing through platinum when their cards are all level three and they're playing a gun a bench a bunch Oh, geez. Against a bunch of good whales that have level five cards that are just stuck in Platinum League because they're not good at deck building, 
um, mm-hmm. and, and breeze through that league and then end up in diamond where they're very out of the league. And so this could be kind of that, that stop for those players. Um, and, and so that's kind of my theory, the reason why they ended up choosing platinum at five, but I do have a feeling that they're willing to negotiate, um, platinum league. So you're saying that basically because diamond is full of the big boys that know how to play then they need platinum to be a level five in order to prepare them, prepare players for that. Yes. And, and so it, it's, I mean, you do kind of have to uh, pick the worst um, are the, the lesser evil. And, and I feel like having that is going to be um, less detrimental to players than having uh, farmers and hanging around in platinum with their yeah. level five cards. But I'm not sure. Uh, I could mm-hmm. totally be wrong. And in January, we could see them say, hey, we needed to make a tweak to this. Counterpoint to that is if I'm a good new player and I'm able to get a couple of my cards to level four and I do breeze through the gold league uh, and I get into platinum and I'm able to be competitive through platinum, what I really need at that point is resources, right? What's what's preventing me from being able to compete in the Diamond League isn't necessarily skill. It's the fact that however many copies I've accumulated, I need to more than double that now, right? Like I need help. I need I need the 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 end of month rewards from Diamond. I I I, I need gold. I need cards. I need stuff to to be able to compete. And and by by artificially, and artificially is maybe the wrong word, but by choosing to keep those strong gold players with fours and threes decks stuck in gold, and then maybe they finish in platinum, you are limiting how quickly they can accumulate the resources they need to be able to compete in Diamond and Heroes League. And that's just going to slow down their progression and turn it from maybe a three or four month uh, build process to a five or six month. And I don't know, that feels bad to me. All right, you've convinced me, but it's not because of the end of the month uh, season re- rewards. I've done that math crunching many times, and the amount of uh, resources that a person accumulates over the course of the month is mm. like tenfold over the course or versus the end of the month rewards. And we do know that uh, Sheepyard has introduced those bonuses for being in Platinum and Diamond and Heroes League um, based on a win. So, so that in- right there is enough to to prove your point. So I'll give you that one. <laughs> All right. So Michael, I'll give you the last, the last word on this. What do you think? Uh, I do. I do like this overall. I want to make that very clear. I think mm-hmm. this is a great, great way to help out new players. It, it kind of feels like you're coming into the game new. You get training wheels up through gold where it's like, okay, we're going to make this reasonable for you. You're going to learn how to play. And then you get to platinum and the training wheels are off. And it's like, well, if you've really learned, then you'll be able to ride your bike through, but uh, you're going to have to navigate around some obstacles. All right. I lied uh, because <laughs> I just realized there was one more thing I wanted to talk about uh, for players who have max level libraries and they walk away from the game for a while. Um, they're going to come back and suddenly none of their cards work right. Sex to I suck. Agree. <laughs> well, but, but, but it's, it's a legitimate, cons- it's, it's a funny situation, but it's also a legitimate concern. They've put time and effort, uh, blood, sweat, tears, maybe money, uh, maybe their wives' monies, um, <laughs> uh, into into this library that now that they've come back because they've fallen so far uh, doesn't behave the way uh, they are accustomed to it. And I don't know how much of um, yeah, I don't know how I don't know how many of those players there really are. Right. That, I was going to say I don't know how much of a problem this is. I don't. I don't know if that's necessarily I don't think something you have I to worry about compared yeah. to retaining new players. It, it's a non-issue because um, both to your points, it's a small percentage. But then secondly, um, most of the people that are in those leagues don't have cards that are capped to you. Like if you've got a max library and, and we're talking about Silver League, your Silver League opponents aren't all going to have all maxed level three cards so you are already going to have an advantage by having all of your cards at level three and then secondly there are still plenty of bots in those leagues and we all know how easy it is to beat a bot you're still going to sweep through those fairly easily speak for yourself i still rope my turns against bots (laughs) 
I, th- I think really the most important lesson to take away from this is never stop playing Stormbound, and then you don't have that problem. <laughs> well, there is that as well. <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on from this, which, by the way, I, I, I actually think this is probably one of the three most amazing uh, changes to the game since we got started. If it, the, the experience that I would have had, Sabaiku, you were right there with me step for step, uh, but the experience that I would have had going through the leagues the first time uh with card level caps and never running into an all level five pirate deck in gold oh my gosh like yeah wow, that would have been amazing <laughs> all right moving on we have a quality of life improvement um when one of your friends decides to challenge you for a battle uh there's now a, a better notification you'll see it on the uh home screen you can see that uh, as well if you go to the Stormbound Kitty uh, uh, notes page. It's hard to sort of describe what a, a, a screen notification looks like, but it's basically a blue bar across the top uh, notifying you no matter where you are that, hey, uh, this dude wants to uh, play. Well, it's kind of similar um, to like when you get a text message and you get that uh, notification banner. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, there will also, Subaiku, be uh, usual shop offers. Uh, because there is the Christmas event. Uh, you want to walk us through that? Yeah, there's, you know, you can check out the patch notes and see the shop offers yourself. I think they're very similar to what was done last year, although there's a new avatar for the people who like to spend money on that kind of thing. Uh, in addition, similar to the Black Friday event that just ended, you'll get an extra card per pack during the Christmas event. So save up those rubies. Don't spend them now, uh, save them for after Christmas. And uh, there's going to be a discounted brawl, which we always love. And this brawl is going to be a weird one because there will be a zero mana cost minion launchers card at level one, unless you already own it at a higher level in everybody's deck. So everybody's deck will be 13 cards for that brawl. I'm excited to see what that looks like. It's going to be a real crazy one, it sounds like. Oh my gosh, Thomas, all the calculations that I do in my head about like chances of, of cycling into a card are now off by one card. <laughs> oh, no. Is this good? Is this bad? You just got to wing it. <laughs> yeah, you're just going to have... So, so how excited are you to Harvester of Souls, your opponent's zero mana cost minion launchers? Oh my gosh. Yep. Well, that's uh, being included in the deck. So there we go. It's a 12 card <laughs> deck because we already have that one uh, slotted out. <laughs> that's going to be fun. I'm going to be excited about that. Um, although it does sound like I can't have more than one of my own minion launchers. Like if uh, I can't, I, I'm assuming I can't put my minion launchers into the deck because then I have double minion launchers? I have a feeling you can because it doesn't say anything about not being able to do that. And so you're just getting a 13th card in your deck. Oh my gosh. This is this sounds like oh wait, the kind no. of thing. Somebody's going to make... Nope, sorry. No. It says level one unless you own it at a higher level. Higher level, so, right. So yeah, I'm assuming you can't have a lo- two level fives just because you already have One would be it. zero and one, one would be cost zero. One would cost five. Or four mana. I that really sounds hope, awesome. I really hope you're right. All right. Well, what I want to see is a situation where you can minion launcher a minion launcher into a minion launcher of a minion launcher, right? Like we've got to get that kind of the crazy turns with like freebooters or something where we just constantly are minion launching. I'm calling Reckless. <laughs> reckless, make it happen. <laughs> Well, that's going to end the main portion of this episode, which means it's time for me to remind you to contact us, preferably in our channel on the Stormbound Discord server. You can always reach out to us on Twitter at BroodSages. You can always email us at thebroodsages at gmail.com. We also have an additional way for you to reach out and support us. We have a Gumroad account where you can become patrons of our work. Uh, Well, we call it work. Uh, Check out the link on our Stormbound Kitty page. This week we heard from Ubermensch. He's quoting Freeloader. As soon as you add any degree of difficulty, I'm meh. Never did the username check out more. Great episode, y'all. Keep it going. You guys are too genuine in all your concerns and excitements for the game. It really makes me want to hear more from you all, even if I'm not into the game anymore. Someday, you guys may infect me with it, and I can come back to it. Uber, you got to do it quick, man. Otherwise, you know what's going to happen. You're going to come back, and all your cards are going to be level two. (laughs) In Bros League. And that's going to do it for this episode. For Sabaiku and Thomas, I am Freeloader. We are the Brood Sages reminding you to stay hydrated.